Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Disha Dalnia from Anupatra, and I welcome you all to today's webinar on AI and law practice with Ms. Kanan Dhruv. Ms. Kanan is a lecturer at the Hague University of Applied Sciences in Legal Tech, and she's here today to enlighten us with her vast knowledge on AI and legal practice. Just for a recap, in our previous session, Kanan delved on how artificial intelligence has permeated the legal practice and especially legal education. She also recommended few books and uh, elaborated on how AI will play a role in our future as well. Kanan, we welcome you and over to you now. Thank you so much, Disha. It's really uh, an honor to be part of this uh, webinar series and uh, talk about the area that is so close to my heart and something that is very relevant for everyone today, uh, let alone just for the legal fraternity. So what I'm going to do is to start uh, sharing my screen. Do you see this now? Yes, yes, we do. Perfect. Excellent. So um, as Disha mentioned, I'm going to be talking about AI and legal practice today. This is the second part of the conversations that we've been having around, you know, proliferation of artificial intelligence technology in different spheres of legal practice, legal education, and how the client experience is also going to shift um, and is shifting as we speak. Um, my introduction has already been given, but I've been working in the space of law, innovation, entrepreneurship, legal design, and legal tech for past many years. And I've been very fortunate to understand how legal tech ecosystem is developing, not just in India, but outside um, in different continents and in different countries at various speed and scale. Um, artificial intelligence is this new technology that has taken everyone by storm but there has been calls for change within the way we practice law since many years. And innovation is this constant journey that we all have to undergo, especially in a fast paced world that we live in today. But before I kind of start to talk about AI and legal practice, and there will be slides that will come to uh, come later in the conversation as well. But innovation in the legal practice is not just about artificial intelligence. There are many different ways in which tech tools and non-tech tools can play a role in how we imagine um, the work that we do in the legal profession and how clients and external uh, people experience the services that we provide. So I also aim to give a little bit of an overview of you know, the holistic approach of uh, ushering of technology within the legal practice um, and what different ideas and tools can look like. And hopefully that will give you, uh, you know, a more comprehensive picture. I've also been shared with the questions that some of you have, have sent beforehand. And I see that today uh, the questions have kind of spanned across different areas of how AI can impact our lives, not just the legal practice. So my effort will be to talk a little more in general about how AI is kind of uh, bringing change. There will be last 15 to 20 minutes Q&A. So please feel free to ask your questions then but also put it in the chat so that we can curate and make sure that all of your queries are answered. Uh, and with that, I'm going to start with uh, the presentation for today. So in terms of the key questions that I'm going to be focusing on for the presentation today are, as you see on the screen, the overwhelming kind of, you know, um, thoughts and ideas have been around and questions and concerns, in fact, as well, around how AI is set to impact the legal industry. So I will try to delve a little more on that. Uh, but I will also be looking at what skills may be necessary for tomorrow's lawyers and what are some of the key takeaways for legal practitioners who are looking to introduce AI in their work. So for those of you who were there in the last kind of webinar on AI and legal education, you know a little bit of a focus that I put on human-centered design and um, the various aspects of how legal education, but also a part of how um, skills that may be relevant for the uh, legal pro pro uh, professionals for tomorrow can start with the legal education for today. So some parts of it were already covered. There are some slides which might be repeat, a couple of them, but hopefully that will provide the context in which today's conversation is going to take place. Um, this is the most overwhelming question that we see on our social media or in the conversations that we have with our industry colleagues 
on whether the lawyers will be replaced by AI. And are we really looking at a time when we uh, imagine a very different legal service delivery? I'm also happy to see some interaction in the chat if you have any opinions about this and any thoughts that anybody uh, wants to kind of share with one another about this very important question. Um, I can imagine that this must be on many of your minds that are we looking at a time where lawyers are going to be completely replaced by technology, especially by artificial intelligence. So I'm curious to see uh, what you all think. I'm going to give a 30 second and then I will provide my answer because the next slide is kind of giving my take on uh, what uh, I think about replacing of the lawyers uh, by artificial intelligence. It, is it that extreme or not at all? Um, that is another extreme that this is not going to impact the legal service delivery or, or the legal profession in general or whether the answer is somewhere in the middle. Maybe with that kind of introduction, I'm going to start uh, sharing what I think about whether the lawyers will be replaced by AI, but please feel free to write again in the chat. So if you look at this question in the broader context uh, of you know, how the legal uh, work will be impacted, this is the statement that we hear a lot of times that it's that the lawyers who are not using AI will be replaced by those who are using AI. It's kind of becoming a little bit of a cliche. What does it actually mean? There is a clear kind of message that is coming out of this statement, which says that it is going to be imperative for lawyers to understand how artificial intelligence technology works and how that can be used by them in making their tasks more effective and how they can also increase their productivity and efficiency in the client service delivery at every aspect of the cycle of starting with the case to putting it to the ultimate conclusion. Um, there are several kinds of nuances to this, but there are a couple that you will see on the screen. So um, what I believe, and from the reading and research that I'm doing around this topic, my belief is that with the advent of AI, legal professionals will be expected to do different kinds of jobs. Um, so the simpler and the repetitive tasks can be outsourced, quote unquote, to the artificial intelligence technology in a way that they can start to focus on more complex set of challenges and certain issues that maybe AI is still not very good at completing at this moment. But again, we are just talking of this moment because as I mentioned in the last conversation also, we are still at the beginning of the AI revolution. So there are you know, voices which would say that AI is still not completely correct in many cases or there are hallucination issues. But then again, this is just the beginning. And with better training, better data set, AI will also become more correct uh, over a period of time. But for now, it is very clear that certain repetitive tasks can be uh, taken over for the legal professionals to focus on client-centric, more uh, complex uh, questions. And then there is another nuance to this question too, which would uh, aim to kind of... Uh, give a perspective on what kinds of job uh, legal professionals will see themselves doing. The current set of tasks and skill set will still be relevant, of course, in terms of understanding basics of the law, basics of the drafting, but more focus on client counseling, human-centered practice, as we talked the last time, really keeping in center the person or the client who, whose problem we are trying to solve and thinking through with them. And then because more regulations will be created around new technology, the need for the legal professionals uh, for today and of course in the future will be more towards creating compliance-based thinking as to uh, you know, making sure that the regulations are adhered to not only by the law firms, but also by the clients, by the customers who are seeking these services and more and more using AI technology. So how to also create, for example, guidelines for ethical and fair and responsible use of artificial intelligence. So this is where a lot of legal jobs will also start to focus towards. So going back to the first statement, making sure that you know how AI technology works or just having a general idea is going to be absolutely crucial so that you will be able to pick up on the conversations that will take place from a proliferation of this technology everywhere, not just in the legal profession. Uh, again, if you have any questions on that, please feel free to put it in the chat and we'll come back to it uh, later, but these are very important 
kind of you know consideration to keep in mind as we move forward just like the last time i also asked chat gpt on what it thinks about uh, lawyers being replaced by artificial intelligence and as usual it was quite brilliant in coming up with a one liner and as you see on the screen it says blend of empathy ethics and adapt adaptability in navigating the legal nuances is irreplaceably human so it's a complex statement but it basically tries to say that empathy uh, and empathetic thinking the client centric practice that we talked about last time ethics as i mentioned on the previous slide the guidelines or the ethical standards of using ai and adaptability so the flexibility of kind of you know making sure that different situation can be dealt with the jugaad mentality that we call sometimes in india but that is irreplaceably human that technology will not be able to take over but the catch is the last phrase that chat gpt comes up with at least for now so maybe for the for few years to go uh, there will be kind of the need for human intervention the human in the loop as the eu ai act also uh, kind of focuses on and there are some slides on eu ai act today that i have for you if you have any questions around this but as i said technology is just becoming better and better um so at least for now this is our niche but we'll have to continue to focus on where we can add value as human beings so we are looking at a very different kind of future and we have to be a little prepared on what is to come let me say also one thing on this slide is that um artificial intelligence is just one technology right the machine learning or the neural network that use that makes this technology possible but you have to look at the changes in the broader context of seeing how social media is also proliferating in our lives how metaverse is also going to take place what kind of changes will come through more and more uptake of cryptocurrency or blockchain so all of this combined will be creating a different kind of future for us to imagine um this might sound quite kind of you know science fiction like but um we making just kind of gradual steps in our mind might be a good idea and using this technology enough to know what it is is also very very helpful um i have this forward that i kind of continue to see on my social media feed uh, for the last couple of days and this gives an idea of what is possible uh, through uh, artificial intelligence technology so there is this particular uh, organization it started to use an ai assistant and with the use of um, the ai assistant it saw that the work that people were doing in a certain amount of time uh, kind of was able to be done in much lesser time frame they were able to kind of stop a lot of repeat inquiries as you saw as you see on the screen uh, they were able to save a lot of resources and even people who were working on this in this case customer satisfaction uh, area were able to um, deliver better outcomes for the customers and the the number of kind of you know uh, up our saved or amount of profit that was able to be made is so much greater with the use of this technology so this goes on to show how the the use of ai enhanced what the work people were doing so it's kind of as i mentioned in the beginning this is not replacing of people as such but enhancing it and kind of giving them different kinds of skill sets and tasks to look at so these are the changes that we are all kind of seeing around us and i thought this could also start with some thinking on what it could look like um, for the legal profession for the conversation today as i mentioned there have been questions around general uptake of ai technology so i thought i'm going to spend some time in understanding what benefits and concerns of ai technologies are so as you see on the screen these are just some of the ideas that i have and this is by no means a very comprehensive list but uh, you know before being only concerned i wanted to talk about some benefits of ai technology and as you can see uh, it can take over the automotive and repetitive tasks it improves efficiency of human beings and this is not just for law but this is in general again um enhanced decision making because because of big data we have a lot more parameters to look at and different perspectives are offered to us because of that we can uh, beg, make better decisions and predict better outcomes as we can do uh, as of today for example in comparison the use of artificial intelligence in healthcare has also been exponential in predicting certain diseases uh, kind of also um, optimizing the use of resources within healthcare so in that way 
we see a lot more uptake of AI in healthcare sector, especially advancing, preventing diseases, the benefits can be immense. Um, the next one is creating solutions which are innovative. With human brain and our current cognitive capacity, we have certain frameworks in which we think about solutions. But with newer parameters offered to us, we can come up with better solution or use machines in a way that our solution can be enhanced further. Um, the cyber crime, and we will see that on the next slide, are also unfortunately increasing. But on the flip side, safety enhancement through using artificial intelligence uh, can also come in extremely handy in making sure better encryption systems are created or better kind of uh, filtering uh, the spams or making sure that that is not taken very seriously by organizations can also be a big benefit of artificial intelligence. As we saw on the previous slide, the customer experience can be tremendously enhanced uh, by taking over the low hanging fruits uh, and giving it uh, to the AI technology. Insights from the big data, similar to innovative solutions here. Um, business efficiency, saving resources, increasing profit, that is also happening. And the errors can be minimized because of course, uh, AI has biases, but there are no human beings without biases as well. So here kind of repeatedly using a technology and training it in a certain way, one can ensure that the errors can be minimized. And I'm saying all of this because as legal professionals, it is extremely important to understand the bigger purview in which this technology is operating so as to be more efficient at our work. But on the other side, with the benefits comes the concern, um, bias and discrimination. The fact is that the data on which AI is trained is something that is available online. There is a lot of resource which is still offline, not completely digitized yet. And if you know a cert, if AI is trained on the certain data which is just available online, there are clear biases. So for example, right now, a lot of online data come from North America and the tools that are trained over there are predominantly thinking in the way a North American thinks. And then we have to be very careful uh, in different countries of what it means in terms of how we think, how we understand uh, different situations and how we understand even reality. A lot of conversations are going on around privacy concerns and the data that we upload. Uh, one has to be very careful in making sure that personal and sensitive data is not shared very actively on AI uh, because it is used in training uh, the model and then it can kind of reproduce the same data for someone else. Better legal and legislative framework is needed around privacy and data protection everywhere and the better implementation of it. As we mentioned the last time, data protection and the whole purview of data is crucial uh, in understanding how AI technology works. One of the key concern, and in many conversations this comes up for me, is the dependence on AI, right? Because we start adopting the technology and because it is so convenient, we forget what it is to be without that technology. So uh, by default, we start relying on it and we have to be careful in drawing the balance and drawing the line of kind of not flipping over the side where our own abilities start to, start to get minimized uh, on performing even the basic tasks. Um, Whoever makes this technology yields a lot of power. Uh, you will see, and we are already seeing the power shifts uh, from certain players to the other. For example, big data companies or the countries where these AI tools are housed will continue to have a lot of power because of a lot of data concentration. The conversations around job displacement and economic inequality, because those who will understand this technology, make this technology, will naturally be able to take over a lot of um, jobs and the skill set that are going to be required in the market in the years to come. Uh, and that is going to create even more economic disparities. So that is also a big concern. Security risk, I mentioned last time, the cybersecurity issues and, uh, you know, hackers becoming just better at their jobs. Uh, with AI, you can send that spam email to 10x of the time. So imagine the kind of advantages that they can generate. And these are also the concerns for security agencies and regulatory organizations. Ethical dilemma and cultural nuances. So in a way, the way data is data is fed to the technology, um, a certain kind of narrative starts to get built up and one has to be very careful in not buying into it, always double checking and making sure that enough offline sources are also available to you to make a decision and not just AI. Misinformation, deep fake, there was a question that was already posed to me uh, 
beforehand and of course that is a big concern as i mentioned earlier it is not just ai you look at you look at the whole of the technologies together so misinformation ai deep fake and then social media right so all of this together also creates a big concern and how as legal professionals we can come up with the right guidelines in our organization in our practice to make sure that these issues are tackled can you can we think about creating a technology that can you know catch misinformation before it starts to get spread so there are technical solutions also but unless we understand what the concerns are we cannot treat it very effectively um then lack of transparency if some of you must be you know following this conversation you would know that we don't know how ai makes the decision right so there's something called a black box more and more technology people are trying to put their time in understanding uh, how an explainable ai is created so uh, when a lot of data is fed to the ai tool it comes up with an answer but how it came up with an answer we don't know as yet so that is a human being can explain the logic but not the ai and that's uh, a concern around the lack of transparency aspect of course digital dependencies and addiction creates loss of human connection we kind of stop relating to one another uh, in a in a organic way we prefer to spend time online and there are concerns that ai again with that metaverse technology what it would create um the last two are quite significant as well because it kind of looks towards the unknown what would technology end up creating we still don't know as yet as i mentioned this is still an evolution we are still at the beginning stage so there are unintended consequences which we are not able to comprehend at the moment and that can even create existential risk i mean with ai the conversation becomes quite polarized that either it will be a utopian scenario or a complete doomsday again the answer is somewhere in the middle a balanced approach to understanding and utilizing this technology is needed uh, but we have to be mindful of how powerful it is Uh, and what kind of consequences it can create for all of us so more and more you know uh, these conversations are taking place at international forums different countries are coming together in creating guidelines and a lot of um, you know work is being done even by the united nations agencies that just goes on to show that it's not just you know the effect of this technology in our day to day job but the larger bigger picture is also very significant when you try to connect the dots um with all of this said i just wanted to again frame the reference of what artificial intelligence actually is at the end of the day the machines that are being able to display intelligence levels of a human being is the ai technology um kind of creating those human cognition uh, uh activities for a machine to kind of simplify uh, the human tasks um and and how that machine works in a way uh, to be able to take over certain human uh, intelligence aspect is what artificial intelligence technology is it's nothing new uh, the term was coined as back as in 1956 in the us in academic conference work has been going on since then so it's been so many years uh, but then again because internet started to develop a lot of data pool a um, lot of cloud um, technology also kind of made sure storage was possible all of that played a role into the kind of large language models or generative ai that we see today um yes and ultimately the question is then what is intelligence and what do we understand as human beings what intelligence is it is how our brain works so kind of trying to think what activities our brain undertakes and whether that machine is able to take or uh, you know do the same activities or not is something for conversation indeed and and to be able to think about um there is this is something more technical that how the technology actually works for those who are interested but very briefly it's a neural network technology uh, there is a, something called transformers i'm very happy to talk about this but i'm i can understand this is very technical so if there are any questions please um, let me know and then the last part of this slide is about narrow ai and weak ai um, when you open the website of open ai um, uh, organization they make it very clear that they are working towards making artificial general intelligence what is artificial general intelligence so right now chat gpt is actually a weak ai it's not a strong ai we see that it's so brilliant and it is able to come up with good answers but at the end of the day it is just a chat bot it's able to just come up with answers to some questions and it is just looking at language if you have used dali it comes up with different images now um, there are also videos possible 
but a strong ai is an ai which is able to do more than one task so for example making tea chat gpt cannot make tea it can just give you a recipe but artificial general intelligence is a technology which makes ai to do more and more tasks that human beings do um so that is what the effort is towards and there is an entire technological background on how this is being worked towards again very happy to uh, answer your question because i see myself reading more and more now technological aspects because uh, that is quite fascinating how fast that is happening i have you know uh, some colleagues who are in the data science department or it department and they are not able to keep up as to the kind of changes that are happening now so uh, that is just giving you the context again coming back to the legal practice and coming back to the field where you know we are all kind of really interested to know how this technology impacts so very quickly on this slide that you will see um and we talked about this briefly that of course productivity is enhanced because low hanging tasks are taken over even for access to legal information access to justice this is a very good technology at least people who cannot understand some of the basic laws basic rights that are affect applicable to them uh ai or at least the current weak ai can give them um, you know basic simpler summary understanding of the law um, of course as our task of legal professional is to verify this and make sure that it is not hallucinating hallucinating means coming up with wrong answers sometimes com coming up with completely unrelated answers uh, and and that is something that the human beings will be really expected to check in uh but it, but that will also help creating a human centered legal practice we talked about this uh the focus will be on the client problem and how that can be solved better but then again there are ethical considerations in making sure that yeah you have the balanced application as we mentioned as i mentioned before data protection uh within the law firm where where are you saving the data are you giving it to the company or are you saving it in house so those are really important conversations uh i'm sure you are having with some of your it colleagues or even um, within within your organizations and one of the things that i have always noticed is that in the legal profession um, you know there is always some resistance to changes or resistance to uptake of technology so while introduction of just the tech tools is one thing but integrating this even in the culture of the organization or culture of the practice is critical so right amount of training right amount of workshopping education is very important to make sure you take everybody along with you in every organization there are people who will be very excited about this and those who are not yet you know convinced um and those conversations are critical to have i think it should already been happening but if not i highly encourage because it's it's the organizational culture uh, issue then and making sure that everybody progresses together this is the future this is where things are going uh, even internationally um but then i again want to do kind of come back to the point i made earlier that legal tech is more uh, than just artificial intelligence and i'm sure many of you will be aware of how technology has already been trying to make inroads into to the legal practice since uh, many years and what i have for you in the next couple of slides are different examples of what um, different technology can look like for legal practice ai right now is just chat gpt generative ai chatbot coming up with summaries answers and we are going to be seeing the different scopes of it but um there is a lot more right with technology as such so um legal research again um using the ai tools this is where of course ai takes a precedent uh, sorry a lot of uh, predominance in providing better case laws relevant citation i know that a lot of law firms in in india and even outside are creating the legal research chatbots internally or using it along with a few law firms so that at least the basic information provision can be made very easily e discovery uh, sorting out a vast uh, amount of data to use to kind of generate relevant information at a relevant time uh, this can also at times provide trends visualization de depending on different tools that you use um document automation i mentioned this last time as well but of course this is where a lot of startups are coming up lot of kind of um how can you say they are being uh, integrated in different law firm practices also but generating document templates is clause libraries automatic changes even sometimes on google we see you know auto completion of uh, different sentences and that at scale really leads to dot document automation and this can be really customized to the needs of the client document management would mean managing different uh, storage uh, of documents version control very important and making sure that 
yeah, this is also sorting out uh, the documents in the right way. Legal analytics would mean extracting trends and patterns from the data and developing insights. Again, this is where AI comes uh, very handy in predictive judicial analysis. What could be the likely outcome of a case? Uh, and what are some of the case laws that can be most relevant based on the past data sets and based on the past case laws? So again, this is uh, uh, very helpful uh, with AI technology. But then again, you know, not everything on this screen is about AI. Some are just basic technology tools which are um, kind of working without the AI technology. Uh, and, and that is also important to be seen. So legal tech itself is a very helpful domain. Um, and with AI, this is just exponentially going to grow. Practice management platforms are, are really handy. Uh, in court, this is court management platforms where the entire uh, you know flow or, or case journey is managed from the uh, beginning to the end. E-filing, of course, I think I'm sure many of you will already be aware about docketing and electronic filing in general, knowledge, knowledge management systems, compliance tech. Um, again, this is where AI comes in very handy. I see a lot of startups as well in this space where tools are used to identify and managing risk and also coming up with different compliance requirements beforehand. So this is also extremely handy technology uh, in the legal space. But, but this is where you can see, you know, human beings will usually take, let's say, 50 hours to do something. With a compliance tech technology, it might just take a couple of hours. So the amount of hours that are saved will be tremendous. Clients will be really benefited. But then the extra time, what do you do as a lawyer? So you might have to also upskill yourself in understanding what are some of the ways in which you can make sure you deliver quality outcomes in general. So there will be a lot of disruption. There will be a lot of changes coming. Uh, but hopefully these conversations internally will already help you prepare for what is to come. E-signature and digital signature in general, extremely kind of, you know, uh, important area where big startups have taken place almost to a place where some of them have even gone on to do IPOs uh, abroad in the US. And in India also, this is very, very kind of, you know, growing area uh, of, of importance, not just in law, but regulation and, and generally in the legal departments in big corporates. There are other important tools as well. Of course, blockchain technology, smart contracts, which is a subset of blockchain smart contracts specifically also affect the way in which we contract or we reach agreements. So uh, that is also a very helpful technology to look at. I'm sure many of you will be aware, happy to answer question, not today completely in the purview of the context of, context of this conversation, but you cannot ignore all of this. And Simple chatbots, software applications, even without AI, have been on many uh, law uh, websites. And that is something that is already proving quite effective. So uh, that is something that I also wanted to mention to you. Um, but coming back to the AI again, using artificial intelligence for all of this technology is really driving change. Uh, and, you know, right now it's starting with different chatbots or document automation or you know, just e-signature or e-filing, but it is just going to grow more and more um, into proliferation in various aspects of uh, legal practice. I mentioned this last time uh, to be aware of the kind of changes that are coming by different agencies, not just by law firms. So there are external players that are stepping up. Now PwC and Ellen and Overy organizations like at, at, of that scale are introducing AI chatbots, something called Harvey. And in Westlaw, uh, they have kind of started with uh, Westlaw Precision using the very concept of generating AI, generative AI. So kind of giving a lot of data to uh, a chatbot for it to come up with the right answers. Very happy to also talk about how this technically takes place, how this is kind of housed within different uh, law firms and how this is uh, implemented across the different aspects of the organization. But a lot of interesting work is happening. This is really the time if you're interested in technology to see what different areas of law become important. Shifts are clear, really clear, clear uh, in, in, in law practice in different parts of the world at the moment. I wanted to take a little bit of a moment to also um, tell you about the research uh, and, and what the researchers are looking at with the changes and the disruption I mentioned. This is from the last time. Um, but again, there are a couple of extra research pieces that I came across. So I thought I'll start with this one which is where it shows how AI really kind of impacts uh, certain industries. And if you see the first one, um, legal services is quite at the top. So um, 
there is there is the you know now more published research around yeah legal services are going to be really impacted by ai so uh, that's not the conversation of if or oh, sorry when or, or if it is now how uh, and how do we kind of keep pace with it but this is a different research that i came across and i thought this was very very interesting this is something uh, which took place in an ai research organization in the in new zealand which is where the researchers compared large language models that is generative ai like chat gpt with lawyers and this is kind of groundbreaking because it was able to prove that advanced models are almost matching or even exceeding human accuracy in determining legal issues so if you see the box on the right hand side um what takes a senior lawyer 43 minutes or junior lawyer 56 minutes it takes chat gpt 4 4.7 but at a certain kind of data set that is being given to it funnily chat gpt 3.5 was more effective at 1.44 minutes um so this is significant uh, amount of time saved um the the research says that llms are now not only able to operate at a fraction of a price but the cost reduction is almost 99.97% so this is like a systemic shift in legal practice uh, and this is huge that you know uh, how um, lpos or senior lawyers compare to different tech tools in um, in just doing the same task of the same quality by the way um, so i think this was worth mentioning and you know very very happy to see what your comments are and what your thoughts are but i do see this as as quite quite uh, big uh research but then again there's another research that i thought i should also mention to kind of give you another perspective this is done in the us on the west coast uh, by stanford university which is looking at efficacy of large language models so even though uh, with coming up so this is about comparing with the lawyers in in determining legal issues because the law work of the law professionals is is kind of ranging across different tasks when it comes to coming up with different case laws and coming up with different um you know predictive answers there are still hallucinations and this is comparing gpt 3.5 to other two tools by different organizations so this is also concerning that um that that yeah ai tools do hallucinate come up with the wrong answers at times that means that checking by the human beings is going to be very important as chat gpt says at least for now but then there's a tendency to perform better for more popular cases and those from certain geographical areas again this is about the data discrepancies and that might be addressed in the times to come um but yeah this is concerning because if if uh, if you know hallucination rate is 0.88 it's it's not as good as not being good enough not at all being good enough really um but is it problem just for now uh, yeah those are the open questions for all of us what i wanted to mention next is you know how the whole um, economics is is shifting and what kind of newer players are coming up in this in this space so what i have seen is that a lot of ai uh, or legal ai startups are coming up um, not just internationally but also in india really interesting work is being done uh, by people outside of the law firm or outside of the legal practice um with startups you know entrepreneurs technology people including with some of the law uh, colleagues coming up with solutions that that can be very relevant for lawyers so these are some examples that you see uh, robin ai juro and luminance are more around contract automation and automatic correction of different mistakes clause library uh, kind of ai Reg regology is interesting because it kind of compliance tech platform coming up with the right regulation um for the right kind of cases that may be needed or right kind of uh, adherence to different uh, laws and regulations may be needed this is really interesting i know that in india there is uh, vakil search has been for a very long time it's a legal tech platform uh, but then there are also platforms like signsy and lawyer is also there are many 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 and it's nice i think as i mentioned still i think in my understanding Uh, this is legal tech using technology for kind of put putting efficiency and productivity in the legal task but with ai this might just be exponentially faster um 
We talked about Professor Richard Suskin last time and some of his books are absolutely worth having, especially the first one, the end of lawyers in between that you see. But even the other ones, tomorrow's lawyers and online courts are very interesting reads. Um, I wanted to kind of come towards the conclusion of my talk because I know that some of you will have the questions. But yes, we are looking at the time where changes are coming about in the legal profession compared to what we have seen in the past two centuries. It is not a time to worry or panic. It is just time to be prepared. It is time to kind of see how you can add value. And um, the fact is that we are still living in the world where people have access to internet, but not access to justice. So the work of lawyers and legal professionals is here to stay, but how to use this technology to become the force for good is what is really needed um, to kind of start having more and more emphasis in our work and in our conversations everywhere in the law schools, um, in the courts of law, et cetera. So um, some of the concluding slides here would be, if you are a legal practitioner, what would, what would you do or what would you keep in mind? Um, I've mentioned this several times already in this conversation, but of course, to capture it, think about how industry relevant are my current range of skills. And that's precisely why I kind of went through some of the benefits and concerns of AI technology to give the broader perspective. And where do you see uh, you are good at and what kind of issues really excite you uh, as the legal professional? Because there is definitely the work uh, of, of just understanding the regulation, guidelines, ethics of AI, et cetera. Um, I talked about this last time too, but this is, uh, uh, you know, needless to repeat uh, again, and I will still repeat though, that what skills will be needed from legal professionals in the last three to five years, considering the, this is just the beginning of, of using of AI. Uh, again, this is important, how updated I am with the de development in the law and technology sector. What about my understanding of other related sectors and how do I see myself playing um, the role to the best of the advantage of not just career development, but also contributing uh, to the changes and preparedness of, of colleagues and of the society in general. Um, some understanding of technology is necessary. You know, just reading up, um, not, not everybody has to be a coder, but at least if you have friends in this area or colleagues or, or, or family who has some understanding, at least try to understand, you know, uh, how this technology itself works. And one of the key things um, is going to be the understanding of human experiences of uh, of the legal um, aspects and the processes and how organizations look at um, <clears throat> you know solving their uh, legal problems so how one can be very client centered is really going to be relevant so the key takeaways will be uh, that of course the range of skill sets needed from the legal professionals is, is shifting um, this also requires how we view legal education. So changes are, of course, going to be necessary in the way our curriculum is set and how uh, you know training is provided to the future uh, professionals in this space. I talked about it last time, so I'm not going to repeat. But what the clients and customers are going to demand going forward is not just lawyers as fixing my problems, but lawyers who can participate in the creation of solutions along with me. Uh, and this is where you are supposed to kind of really empathize with the client and, and solving the problem, then just saying this, this, this law you should do. So the whole mindset or the attitude will have to shift. Um, there is going to be a more and more validation coming from industry uh, to these areas because everybody can have access to chat GPT and different AI tools. So they will know how much work it will take to draft something. Uh, and then if certain, un you know, um, very different kind of hours are built for it, there will be conversations, of course. Um, the focus, of course, I mentioned this again, but this is a different dimension. So whose problem we are solving to how best they can be solved. So solution creation is, is really the key. And with the student interest increasing, um, more and more people who can have these conversations are going to be relevant uh, in, the, in the time to come. Yes, the legal design and legal tech aspect and how all of this law, design, and technology interact is going to be more, more, more and more in focus. Um, and I mentioned this last time, but uh, I saw that there were some questions around how you think differently if you're a legal educator, then yes, I'm going to mention this just one time that future proofing the skill sets is going to be necessary. And if you don't have a course on, of law and technology, please do if you are a legal educator. There are many interesting uh, tools on, uh, on, on, I mean, online or even on YouTube, just understanding how different legal aspects around regulation of technology works is going to be quite crucial. 
uh, I really have like some slides, but I want to go into the Q&A because I know that uh, we don't have much time. So I'm going to, you know, pause for now and to see if you have any questions and then perhaps it might be best to take these questions um, and then see if, if there is some, some more time left. Karan, thank you so much for wrapping that up. But uh, really, you could keep on talk talking and we could keep on learning from you because it's just so engaging. And of course, the topic is AI is so relevant. And that's why we are seeing at a time more than 100 people at least uh, participating in this because um, uh, genuinely everyone is interested and there is so much more to know. Yes. I'd also like to mention that uh, you spoke about legal tech and legal tech companies uh, in India. In fact, uh, at Manupatra, we, we kind of boast ourselves on being the first uh, legal tech uh, company in India because not only did we start with the legal research database about 20, 25 years ago, but uh, with our compliance management, contract management, we've also introduced AI in our tools and uh, all the things that you mentioned with the e-signature and also, uh, yes, we're really dealing with uh, legal tech here and it's booming in India and how? Yes, so absolutely. We, yeah, we'll just see if we have some questions in the chat board or uh, uh, we also have a list of questions that, uh, uh, that were shared with us earlier. Uh, maybe we can start with that. Like one of the questions was, what was the scope of AI uh, expanding in India? And will it be able to keep up with the rapid AI and tech law pro progression in the West? Hmm. So there's always a comparison. I think uh, that's what that's what the participant wanted to understand. Yes, and this is a very important question. Right now, the technology is just developing, um, and different countries have different ways in which they are addressing this technology. So the fact is that newer regulations and newer laws are, of course, going to be the need of the hour. And that is going to determine how this technology will be um, utilized and how it will spread in different countries. And this is where you really see the, uh, you know, different jurisprudence at the country level coming into the operation. So to talk about the EU AI Act, um, it is very stringent on the different kinds of technology regulation based on the risk that it possesses. So it gives a risk-based framework. If there is some time, maybe I could just share my screen and show how the EU AI Act differentiates oh. AI technologies. Um, but to first answer the question is that India right now has a light touch approach to a regulation of AI as from what I understand. Yes. And that would mean that, you know, right now the whole focus is on making sure that technology really, really develops. And that there is this catching up that happens to the West in terms of just development of the technology. In EU, the EU AI Act has been kind of getting the approval almost now, and it will be coming into practice from 2026. But by, when it starts to come into the practice, imagine the kind of disclosure requirements that they have from AI creators in terms of they have to kind of make sure all of their, their, their algorithms go into something called the algorithm directory, uh, which is where they have to transparently show if there are any biases or not, what data that they are training the AI model on, how the data privacy and protection requirements are being adhered to. So there's going to be so much of compliance needed for AI players that it might slow them down. And that are the concerns in the European Union that like how will innovation foster if there is so much regulation and innovation, sorry, uh, on uh, and um, compliance needed from the innovators. So in India right now, in a way, that kind of boosting of innovation and asking for more players to use AI technology is great. But having said that, you cannot ignore the American, you know, the, the US players in this. At the end of the day, all of these big tech players are based in the US. And the fact that we are all using ChatGPT or Facebook or Instagram, these are the hacks that we are sending all of our data um, abroad. And because of that, even though we are deploying this technology like Microsoft or Google, they're all American companies. And, and we are using this in India without realizing what we are doing. So we have to be also mindful if we have our own technology or not, because uh, we are just training their models better. So mm -hmm. in a way, of course, it's great. We are developing faster, but this is also a very important consideration. And that is, that's the reason why EU has um, a very stringent data protection law also. So even if sending the data to the USA, there are so many court cases going on uh, and very fascinating how this is uh, shaping uh, at the moment. So it's a long answer to the question, but <laughs> that is answering, you know, how innovation will uh, spread geographically in the years to come. 
actually that one answer i think answers so many questions in itself so so it's fine so we have a question in the chat uh, which says what is the progress if any by national judiciaries with the adoption of llm say chat gpt for variant four variants what mm -hmm. is the state of the art concerning identification and determination of issues with respect to complex contracts tax laws identifying uh, contradictions in statute etc that's a very specific question very specific question but very interesting one so i think yeah. as i understand the question it is about how uh, chat gpt4 models are used in judiciary uh, yeah. and then then i'll come to the second part of the question but for now what i'm hearing is that different countries are experimenting the use of um of llms and generative ai in decision making in the courtrooms now this is fascinating because i think so much of legal research can be automated based on the generative ai tools imagine drafting of uh, you know an order or something where a lot of text is required i mean ai can do a fascinating job and more and more judges are coming forward in different countries saying yes i have we've used generative ai at least as a first draft um, and i think their efficiencies has also enhanced but again there are data privacy concern and make, because this is sensitive area even in the eu ai act uh, legal enforcement and all of the regulatory aspect of and and using ai in this is a high risk category because at the end of the day these are matters which are dealing with the lives of people and sensitive issue so one has to be extremely careful in governmental agencies of using ai again whose tool are we using what technology where the data will be there is a lot of technical conversation to be had um but i can imagine that predicting the trends um preventing the disputes from occurring or scaling all of these areas will be enhanced so thoroughly if ai technology is used so maybe this is also a time where i can just show you the um pyramid of eu ai act you can even look it up online but i think it's kind of dated so many changes have happened in the law after this but as you can see here you know oops yeah um so social scoring facial recognition all of that is in in unacceptable risk category uh, education employment justice immigration law as i said this is higher risk category and it's not prohibited but there's a huge conformity assessment which is where a lot of transparency requirements and compliance requirements ju justifiably so of course because you know using ai for education would mean you are able to change the minds of people to think a certain way or the otherwise what is a lot of you know um how can you say this, this raises a lot of question if you see limited risk requirements deep fakes are there you know that means it's still un understood as a limited risk so in european countries uh, this is the this is the concern that why deep fakes is a limited risk it should be at least high risk considering how proliferation of it is happening on social media and how people are not able to see what is true and what is not um and using that in in election practices you know half the humanity is going through elections this year so let's see how ai is going to be used for all of this and spam filters or video games are still in minimal risk this is still a dated uh, um pyramid there are a lot of changes happening in the act after this uh, but that's again the limitation of a regulation of ai technology because the technology part is moving so fast and it is developing almost every single day and bringing more and more facets to it like how is the regulation going to be enough to address different concerns and aspects of it is going to be a question so um yeah this is the eu approach but in usa they have an executive order again kind of light touch do do no harm principle uh, what is left to be seen on how different countries are looking at this brazil has a very interesting act also on ai which is a rights based framework not a risk based framework but i can go on and i want to make sure i address other questions so i'll stop with this one for now okay so uh, how can we deal with bias in data sets that can affect the ai outputs wouldn't mm -hmm. it thwart uh, just uh, justice rather than making uh, access to justice easier yeah the bias is in a data set is a big one i think the only way to make sure that different kinds of data set is fed into the ai systems and um, there is something called the data maximization that every should be uploaded so that at least there is more diversity in the kind of data set but then ai is also trained in a way where you can make sure that it does not have certain biases so i think a lot is going to be asked of the people who write those algorithms and who write the uh, different uh, codes to make sure that they don't create 
which is um, a very biased AI tool, but there are risks, there are big risks, and we are not aware of it uh, in, in implications of what it can create going forward, yeah. Uh, there's another question, which is, is there reliable literature which projects the benefits, the disbenefits to society, uh, displaced workers types, effects on the GDP, et cetera? This is also very on specific. AI? Yeah, it's a specific question. Um, something which is overall I have not yet come across. Um, yeah, what I presented was from different sources I could connect and different dots that I had in my mind, but no something. But of course, there is more conversation on displacement or um, the harms to privacy. Specific, re specific research on specific areas of what you mentioned is available online. Yes. And more is being done. More is being generated. More funding is going into AI research and ethics. Yeah, definitely. So it's a long question. The new criminal bills will be passed by uh, July by, by July in India. Therefore, it is too early to depend on AI chatbots for legal drafting and research for the same. As the LLM models training requires at least a month's worth of input material. How might this gap be addressed by the LLMs in the future? So this is basically I, the question on training uh, time. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I think month, of course, is optimistic. Sometimes it takes a long time. But the fact that we have so much of trained material already, yeah. Um, see, the thing is that to create an LLM, which is a, which is comprehensive, you you need different kinds of data too. And I understand that with the new criminal bills, you need more data or new cases to emerge okay. so that it can be trained properly. It will take time. It will take time. But again, time is the only thing. Otherwise, with more data being generated, it's just going to help the creation and functioning of these tools. So, yeah, I think all is needed is just continuously having more data points and training these models uh, continuously, which these techies, techies are doing. And then AI can also learn itself after a point. So, yeah, but I'm going to stop there. Uh, I think the same person has uh, concluded only by saying that the conclusions uh, drawn are that, let me see if you agree, are that yeah. there is considerable uh, weaknesses in this regard, which I believe can be managed with LLMs coupled with programming models. I, yeah, yeah, I think so. True. Question after that. I think uh, if you have any uh, concluding remarks, uh, I think then we can just uh, wrap up now. Yes, absolutely. I just wanted to thank you for the time. I, I hope this has been a useful uh, um, conversation. I think I've kind of mentioned what the legal professionals should do uh, if they had to prepare themselves for the times. I just wanted to share my LinkedIn details in case if anybody has any questions, so feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I look forward to continuing conversations. I'm very, very grateful to Manu Patra for giving me this opportunity. It's always, you know, a visionary organization with looking at the trends of the future, and we are very lucky to have uh, Manu Patra in the Indian and international ecosystem of law and tech. So thank you once again for the opportunity. Kanan, those were really uh, flowering words. Thank you so much. We are very glad that uh, you could do these sessions and with so much enthusiasm. And uh, so the participant list also just shows that how much your first session generated uh, interest. And this has truly been really wonderful. And we'll share your LinkedIn uh, details uh, when we post the uh, entire session uh, on, on our uh, Manupatra Academy page so that everyone can uh, know where to reach out to you. And yeah, with this, thank you so Excellent. much. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you. Bye-bye.